Hello and welcome back to another Scrap Mechanic video. I know I've been doing some logic intensive videos over the past couple weeks, and although I do use some logic this week, I try to go back to a bit more of a mechanical design. As the title suggests, in this video I build a belt fed machine gun based on the M1919 machine gun. As per usual, I start off a little more ambitious and I had to tone back my ideas so they would actually work in Scrap Mechanic, but I think they turned out really cool. Because I knew I would be working with projectiles, I decided this time to not go to the edge of the world, and instead go to the top of this plateau. Once on top, I placed on the fly module from the new Legend mod. I mentioned in my previous video that this mod will probably save some time in the future, and it absolutely did. If you see me flying around, which I pretty much constantly am, then you can thank this mod. Getting into the build, I had a decent idea of how I wanted this gun to work. I wanted each link on the belt to be composed of three elements, the link, the casing, and the bullet. You can see in the final design how this works, but the link gets pulled through the gun, the cartridge is extracted, the bullet is fired, and then the casing is ejected. I started this off by trying to build the belt link. This would set the scale for the rest of the build. I placed down a platform of extruded metal blocks surrounded by pillars and a ceiling. This is what the entire bullet would be held in and is actually very nearly the final design for this part. After that, I realized that before I did anything else, I would need to know how the bullet would be fired, so I got to some testing. If you didn't know, if a spud gun breaks a cardboard block that had another block attached, that block gets launched off, and this would be the primary mechanism for my gun. I first tested if this still worked at all by placing down a 3x3 of cardboard with some blocks on it and firing some spud guns. I was disappointed to see that it didn't work right away, and the blocks just dropped to the ground. I figured I probably just did something wrong though, and this time I detached the cardboard first so it was a separate creation. You can see that after the cardboard breaks, it launches the extruded metal with a ton of momentum, exactly what I needed. Next I tested to see if it worked while the cardboard was on a bearing instead of completely detached, which fortunately also worked. This would simplify the design immensely. You can see I also started testing with explosives, but eventually decided that they were just too unstable and I went back to normal blocks. One more test I did was to see if I could make the projectile move faster if I added and shot more layers of cardboard. I placed on two layers of cardboard this time with metal in front. In order to break both of these layers, I would have to fire the spud guns twice before the projectile was too far away, but you can see as I do that, the projectile definitely seems to be moving faster. I built up some quick logic that just uses a timer to fire the spud guns twice and moved on. With all of that done, it was time to build the actual bullet encasing. I decided to go with the 2x2 bullet because it provided enough area for spud guns but wasn't too large to build around. I placed down a platform of metal and built walls around it to make a 4x4 tube. Inside of this, I placed down a bearing with 8 cardboard blocks on it, followed by 12 metal blocks to act as the actual projectile. As a reminder, this bearing is to make sure that the bullet can properly be detached from the casing. On the front and sides of this, I added a few mesh blocks that, because of their low friction, would make the bullet leave in a much nicer manner. I built up a simple testing rig that I could drop the casing into to test and tried out my first design. It was less than perfect. After catching up to the bullet and inspecting it though, I realized that I just attached some blocks in the wrong spot and that's what was causing the collision issues. After resolving this and testing again however, it worked just as expected. To clarify, I just completed the bullet encasing. Now I needed to put this inside of the belt link and find a way to attach them together. To do the first part of that was very similar to the bullet. I placed a cardboard block down on a bearing and welded the entire assembly to it. Importantly, I also added this little lip on the outside of the bullet. This is necessary to allow me to grab it and pull it out of the belt later on. I also had a simple solution to chain the links. I just added segments in the center of the link with bearings that could be welded on as many as I wanted in a row. Throughout the build, I make a few minor changes so that I can integrate this into the gun, but everything you just saw was actually the final mechanism for the belt. Next, I moved on to working on the gun itself, the real meat and potatoes of the build. I placed down a platform of metal 3 and welded a single belt segment onto it. This would be the base of the mechanism that I would build the gun around. I realize I haven't talked much about how this kind of mechanism works, but to give an overview, the belt gets indexed through the upper chamber and as it does, the bullets are pulled out and dropped into the firing chamber where they are fired as per normal. What I'm working on right here will be the upper chamber and the mechanism that pulls the belt through. My first thought was to use pistons with gear-like teeth on the top of the belt that would mesh and force it through. To do this, I placed a piston above the belt with a second one that faces sideways. I connected these pistons to a switch and button so I could manually control them, and you can see that I successfully pulled a single link through, followed by immediately returning it. I fixed that pretty easily, and with that working, I saw what would happen if I added more than one link. 
With all the added weights of the links though, this design was just full of blocks phasing through each other and pistons bending, and it was a mess. After that failure, I decided to try using a rotating arm that would pull them through instead. This design would be ideal because, while indexing the belt, it would also hold onto it and guarantee the correct positioning. I placed down a bearing in the ceiling with a plus-shaped arm on it and connected that to an electric engine. I also placed down some wedges on the ends of these arms to help it with collision. After a whole lot of tinkering and convincing, I barely got the arm to go through a single link. On top of that, the size of my belt meant that the teeth didn't really line up properly anyway, so I also scrapped this design. While I was thinking about this, I did a bit of redesigning, including replacing the floor with mesh blocks and adding some everywhere the belt touched, all in an effort to reduce friction. The next indexer I tried was a little out of the box. I had an idea to smush the belt between two sets of wheels and just roll it through. To start this, I placed some wheels on bearings below, followed by one on a piston up top. I'll keep this one brief and say it just simply didn't work. The wheels didn't have enough friction, and if I pushed them with too much force, they just glitched out. After all of that, I decided to go back to pistons, doing it differently this time. Instead of teeth, I placed down a single line of blocks across the top of the belt. Another notable change was, instead of using one piston, I used two for both the downward and sideways movement. You can see that this immediately has much more promise. It's extremely stable and is able to push the belt around without any real issues. With this design, I pretty easily iterated through this entire three-wide belt. I was noticing an issue though. You can see as I push the belt over, it actually slides a whole block further than it's supposed to, misaligning the entire thing. To fix this, I decided to add in a third individual piston. This one would drop down directly in the middle of the indexer with the goal of locking into the peg and stopping the next link exactly in the right spot. I connected this to another switch for testing and tried to figure out what the order of operations needed to be. You can also see here how it stops the belt exactly where it needs to. With that in mind, I started doing some simple logic to get these pistons to fire in the correct order. It would be hard to go over exactly what I did, and I was pretty much constantly changing it, so I'll just explain the concept instead. This logic has two different states, moving and stationary. If it's stationary and you press this button, it extends the pistons down and over to push the belt along. As this moves along, a sensor detects when it passes and extends the locking piston I mentioned a second ago. When the belt has fully indexed, another sensor detects this and resets the entire mechanism to the stationary state. There are pieces of logic I didn't add until the very end, so if you see anything different throughout the build, that's why. It's also worth noting that I use sensors throughout because the physics can be pretty inconsistent and the sensors make sure that things are timed correctly. During this troubleshooting time, I also decided that it would be best for lag and functionality if the belt didn't have bearings between the links. This removes a lot of the aesthetic appeal, but it also makes it work a lot better. After kind of having that working, I moved on to the system that would pull the bullet out of the belt. If you recall, the bullet is attached to the belt with cardboard. By placing some spud guns below the indexer, I can shoot this cardboard and detach the bullet. Although there is only one piece of cardboard, I placed six spud guns to try to account for any positioning errors. From this mechanism, I build out what will become the firing chamber and place two connected pistons at the back. I extend these forward and place two more pistons with blocks on them that will act as the grabbing arms. I detach the bullet by breaking the cardboard, and you can see that using these switches I can pull the bullet back and it falls down. Something about this was incredibly satisfying, and it might just be because this is the first part of the gun that actually worked, but I really like this part. After that, I added in some more logic that just activates these pistons in the correct order. This logic was pretty simple, and you can see it working here. I hooked this up so that it automatically activates after the belt has been indexed and tested this entire system. Amazingly, the integration worked on the first try and I could move on to actually firing the bullet. As soon as I started this part, I realized that my spud guns were in the way, so I quickly moved them up top and hooked them back up. I placed down four spud guns at the rear of the build, followed by the same logic to make them shoot twice. These would be the primary spud guns, and at this point I used them to fire the first bullet, which shot straight off the cliff. Having fired that bullet and being left with nothing but an empty cartridge, the next logical step is to add in the ejection mechanism. To do this, I cut a hole in the side of the chamber and placed a piston in with blocks on it. I connected all of these individual pieces together, starting with this sensor. It activates when a bullet falls, triggering the spud guns to shoot, and then soon after that, the piston to eject the empty cartridge. I connected it up so that this system fed back up to the top to loop, as well as adding in some memory gates and other sensor mechanisms to ensure this part actually worked. Overall, it was pretty simple, but required some proper sequencing. After all of that, I loaded in a belt to do the very first complete weapon test. And go. How did it immediately break? 
Fortunately, the fix was as simple as trying again, and here it is unloading a full four round belt. Oh, it's so cool. Look at it go. Oh, that's so cool. After that success, I moved on to adding the cosmetic pieces to make it look like an actual machine gun. I was so inspired by the M1919 mechanism that I completely forgot about that and designed this to look like the first decent Google image search. What do you think it looks like? I can't find the image I used anymore and didn't know what gun it was. While I was doing this, I actually used a controller to move the trigger back when it's preparing to fire. I also add in this little tab with a switch on it that indicates whether or not the gun should automatically fire or be single shot. Yes, I know this tab makes no sense for an actual gun, I just thought it looked cool here. What followed all of that was a long hour of testing, major issues, and fixes. If I just wanted to fire one, I can do this. Excuse me? Some of the issues I encountered included the belt going the wrong way. Now I press this button and it breaks everything and nothing happens correctly. Misaligned bullets, realizing I accidentally removed crucial components, and many, many more. Lots of repeats as well. One of the fixes you may notice is that I created a specific belt design that had an empty weighted chamber on the end. This wasn't strictly necessary, but greatly improved the balance and consistency, so I went with it. Anyway, after a bunch of minor fixes, I had something that worked pretty consistently, as long as I remember to delete the cardboard. The only remaining issue is that it still occasionally requires intervention by placing down a block, but there isn't much I can do about that because that's just how the physics engine behaves. That aside, as you've come to expect, I will let it run a full clip while I do my outro. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and feel free to subscribe. If you're interested in another video like this, you can click the card on screen or check out my channel. I actually really love this. It does have some logic in it, but the mechanical motions are so satisfying and smooth, when they work, that I could watch it all day. I especially really like the way the charging handle looks and moves, it makes it feel like a real gun. After doing this, I would love to make some other weird and unique weapons, so give me some ideas for that if you have them. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.